fun, you get to ah, infinity. It doesn't happen. So, since you never get to this place called infinity, you always use parentheses with infinity. That's it. That says, ladies and gentlemen, anything from 5 to all the way to the right, not including, that's what that says, not including 5. Hey, we've indicated the same set, three different ways, and the, the trick about this is getting one of these and going to the other two. So let's practice that once. Let's, uh, let's look at this right here. Start with the number line. Then we can go to the other two expressions. By the way, number line, interval rotation, they're just hand in gloves. I mean, they just go right together. So if you've got one, I would suggest do the other. Got this one, do that one first. So these guys go perfectly together, hardly any explanation needed for how to get from one to the other. Here's my set. What do I start with for this? Brandon. Sure. And? Three. Mm -hmm. All the way to? Seven. And? Parentheses. That's it. Just all the good stuff, none of the excess. Bracketed parentheses, bracketed parentheses, uh, bracket. Bracketed three, bracketed three, parentheses at seven, parentheses at seven. So I can ask you questions about this set. For instance, is five in this set? Yes. Is three in this set? Yes. Is seven in this set? Mm -hmm. okay, so you can observe and make the, come to those conclusions. All right, we have one other to do, and it is starts with the, the set of all x such that the set of the notation. Set of all x such that. Now just notice what these uh, x's are. These x's are right there. How would you describe these x's without using mathematical notation? Connected. What words would you use? That's pretty mathematical. That's correct. But it's pretty mathematical. Let's say you're speaking to a person who has mathophobia. And you don't want to offend them. But you still want to describe those, those numbers. Where are those numbers? Use English language. English. I'm sorry, what? Thank you. Between. Okay. They are between <laughs> three and seven, right? Isn't that a perfectly simple, logical explanation of where all those x's are? They're between three and seven. So when I do my set of all x such that, my x's are between three and seven. And those, same order, three, seven, three, seven. Now, I'm not through yet, but notice that's a good way to start. All my x's are between 3 and 7. And I recall from either my crocodile analogy or the screw yard bully analogy that the arrows of inequality point toward the smaller number, so they're pointing toward the 3 away from the 7. Is that it? Have I finished? Uh, which one? Okay, because I can also include 3 because of this bracket right here, I have to indicate I can also include it here. So bracket translates to, in this case, less than or equal to. Parentheses translate to simply less than. That's not too bad, huh? That's not too bad. Question. So, set better notation, number line expression on the graph, or what we call interval. Every interval notation representation will either start or, or will start or end with either parentheses or brackets. So you got parentheses or brackets. Yes, ma'am. Um, could you, is it always have to be the uh, here's what I suggest. 
I suggest you put it in the same number as the number order as the number line. So three, seven, three, seven, because that represents the order of the number line. It would be correct if you had the seven is greater than x is greater than x to three. But that's slightly confusing because keep it the same order as the number line, and I think you're be better going from one to the other. All right, onward and upward. For just a moment, we want to talk about something called properties of real numbers. When we talk about properties of real numbers, we want to make some observations about uh, how these guys behave. When I use the four basic operations on real numbers. <coughs> when I'm talking the four basic operations, anybody want to hazard a guess as to what the four basic operations are? Addition, and subtraction, multiplication, yeah, and division. And subtract, multiply. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are called the four basic operations. When I perform those operations, what do real numbers do? What are some things I can universally observe? Here's the first one. If I add A to B, I get the same as if I add B to A. And you go, well, yeah, you know that. But did you know it has a name? It's called the commutative property for addition. Which basically says it doesn't matter which order you add things, you're going to get the same total. And this is fairly intuitive as well. Uh, even small children understand this. Uh, if you're checking out your, your items at Kroger through the self-scan line, you know, there's no kid that I've ever seen that panics because his parent or friend is checking out in a particular order. You know, no kid ever says, no, 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 check out the frozen items first, then the canned items to get the best price. Mm -hmm. Now, kids know. Kids know that you just zip the things through, they add the total up, you're going to get the same total, no matter which order you add those things. Community property for multiplication applies as well. It doesn't matter, and, and you observe this with your uh, calculator work. It doesn't matter whether you multiply 7 times 8 times 12, or 12 times 8 times 7, you're going to get the same product. You're going to get the same final answer matter which order you multiply things. Yeah, no big deal, huh? Add any order, multiply any order, same result. Alright, before I put it down for number three here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me ask you a question. You think there's going to be a community property for subtraction? Somebody said no. Uh, I'd like to hear an explanation. Specific. Specific. If you subtract. If you subtract a, um, a larger number from a smaller number, then you get a negative answer. You can do the opposite. You can do the same. Numbers like that. Three minus three minus five would be a negative two. Plus five minus three. You said, I've got a problem because I can think of an example, ladies and gentlemen. 3 minus 5 and 5 minus 2 are, in fact, not the same. 5 minus 3. Of course, they're not the same. Right. 3 minus 5 and 5 minus 3 are not the same answer. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, how many examples did you have to come up with? Properties apply universally, they work every single time. A plus B is always, always, always equal to B plus A. Pick any two numbers in the universe. It always works. So there is no community property for subtraction for one simple reason. You can think of an example where it does not work. All right? Nope, you're right. No community property for subtraction. Sorry if you already wrote it down. All right. Before I pull the sheet down any further, let me ask this question. Is there a community property for division? Don't answer that until I let you know that I am just